What's up friends? Today we're talking about dividend growth stocks. We're talking about four stocks that are all down a lot off of their highs. They all have very safe dividends, the chance for capital appreciation, so the share price to improve, and a history of growing their dividend over time. So let's get into it. If you know me, you know I'm building this 10K to $1 million portfolio right here on YouTube. We are at $68,172. We're up $3,500 today for about a 6% gain. And I want to provide transparency and show people that I am investing in a portfolio. I want to show you if I own stocks or not. And so if you like that journey, like this video, subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a ton. And I hope that we see more transparency in the world of investing. So this portfolio was started February 15th, 2022, and we are almost fully recovered. We are now just at a loss of $5,600 we have put in $74,000. Full disclosure, I do not own any of these dividend paying stocks that I'm talking about today. Here's a look at the portfolio just for you to verify. But if you wanna go deeper and get updates every time before I buy something, before I sell something, and full write-ups on my long-term investments, I have a investing newsletter, austin.substack.com. Today, I just wrote a new buy alert on Meta. There's a link down in the description if you want to check that out. Let's get into the stocks. First, we're talking about Nike. It gets a 99 dividend safety rating from Simply Safe Dividends. They've got about a 1.1% dividend yield. It's a little bit higher than its average five year dividend. Last dividend growth rate was 11% in November of 2021. They have a 30% payout ratio, which is low. That means they've got room to continue paying and potentially increasing their dividend. A 33% forward payout ratio, 38 year dividend streak without a reduction. They increased their dividend from 2007 to 2009. Those recession sales during the great financial crisis were only down 6% and the stock was only down 36% during 07 to 09 compared to the S&P 500, which was down 55%. Here's some of their dividend growth. So 11% November, 2021 over the last five years, 11% per year. And over the last 20 years, 16% per year. They pay a quarterly dividend. It's at $1.22 annually. Their next ex dividend date is June 3rd. That just passed and the pay date was July 1st. So there's another one that's gonna come up next quarter. And so here you go. We talked about this a little bit. Nike's dividend is 10% above its five year average, which indicates the stock might be undervalued. Coupled with a forward PE ratio that's about in line with their historical average, now might be a decent time to invest according to Simply Safe Dividends if you believe in their long term outlook. But let's jump over to fast graphs for the rest of our analysis on Nike, just in terms of. Um, if it's overvalued or undervalued right now. So right now we're looking at the past 20 years, really since 2002 for Nike. This blue line represents its normal or its average PE ratio over that time, about 24. The orange line is a PE ratio of 15, which would be right about in line with its long-term earnings growth rate. That's the difference between the orange and blue line. So as we can see, only a couple times really in the past you know, five years, but really in the past almost 10 years, has Nike traded below its normalized average PE ratio or below that blue line? And right now it's not below it yet, but it's getting down there. And so what this shows on the right side is analyst expectations for the next three years in terms of EPS growth. These numbers can go up, they can go down, so we have to take that into consideration, but it's a good for a rough frame of reference. And so if we take this from now, it should, it's at a blended price to earnings ratio of 29 out to its average of 23 in 2025 based on its growth expectations, you're looking at a 6.8% annualized return. And so that's not bad when you consider the rest of the market, when you consider Nike's history of outperformance. The stock has outperformed the S&P 500 15% compounded growth annually versus 7.5% for the S&P 500, turning a $10,000 investment in 2002 to $176,000 investment today when you consider the growth of the stock price and dividend payments. And that's compared to a $10,000 investment in the S&P 500 being worth $43,000 today with $6,000 in dividend payments over that same period. All right, let's jump over to MasterCard. So MasterCard is another one, 99 dividend safety, incredible. They have a 0.58% dividend yield, so you're gonna get paid a little bit less of a dividend, 
but they've got that 11% dividend growth rate and potentially the ability to grow their dividend for longer since they have a lower dividend and most likely a lower payout ratio, which we'll show in just a second. And there we go. So the payout ratio is 20%, meaning they have more room to continue growing their dividend over time than even a company as strong as Nike does. Their forward payout ratio is 18%. All their debt looks good. They've got a 15 year dividend streak without a reduction. They maintained their dividend from 07 to 09. Recession sales increased 2.1% from 07 to 09 and the return was minus 12% from 07 to 09. 11% in December, 2021. So likely getting another dividend raise here if they keep up with that timeline. 18% per year over the last five years and then 41% over the last 10 years was kind of thrown off from some crazy growth at the beginning. So I wouldn't expect anything like that moving forward. Forward, but hey, probably looking at double digit dividend growth for a while still. They pay a quarterly dividend. Their annual payout is $1.96 per share. They go ex dividend, meaning if you own the stock at that time, that's when you get paid the dividend, July 7th. So that passed and the payout is going to be August 9th. And then the next one will be coming up in November. MasterCard's dividend yield is 10% above its five year average, indicating the stock may be undervalued. Coupled with a forward PE ratio that's about in line, now could be a decent time to invest. So same thing coming from Simply Safe Dividends. Their average five-year PE ratio, 33. It's it's at about 32 right now. Earnings payout ratio, again, looks really good. 18% below 60%, which is their preference. Free cash flow payout ratio below 60%. So it's at 21%. Earnings per share growing nicely over time. Free cash flow per share is growing nicely. Even sales have been growing over time. We can also see that they've been reducing the share outstanding meaning they've been buying back shares that is another form of a return to shareholders let's jump over fast graphs and we can see this black line is above its average for the blue line but they're actually expecting strong earnings per share growth for the next three years and so if we look at that even if we bring it down to the orange line which is the expected price to earnings growth rate you're still looking at a 6.8 percent annualized return over the next two to three years. And if you bring it up to its average PE ratio, which it may or may not hit, then you're looking at a 12.6% annualized rate of return. So very likely, you know, a pretty safe option for those looking for a dividend payer and dividend growth, and probably not gonna see a whole lot of volatility in MasterCard that you would in some of these growth stocks that I own. Next up is Intuit. This one has actually been very volatile just because of how crazy expensive it got, but it's come way down and it still has a very, very good dividend safety rating from Simply Safe Dividends at 98. Again, lower yield, just like MasterCard. Actually for MasterCard, let's just show kind of the, the difference compared to Nike. You can see that over the last 20 or since 2006, the compound annual growth rate has been 31% absolutely crushing the S&P 500. Okay, back to Intuit. 15% dividend growth in August of 2021, which is considered very fast, about $114 billion market cap. Payout ratio, 21%. Again, very low for most companies. A forward payout ratio of 20%. Net debt to capital, net debt to EBITDA looks really good. The dividend growth streak of nine years without a reduction. 1.1% increased recession sales. They didn't pay a dividend back then, so that's why that's blank. Um, minus 29% recession return versus the S&P 500, which was down 55%. Dividend growth, again, we talked about this 15%, but over the last five years, 14% per year. So it looks like they started paying their dividend in 2011. They pay it quarterly. Annual payout is 272 per share. They went X dividend July 8th and the payout is July 18th. That just happened. And so the next dividend we'd be looking at is October. Into its dividend sits 11% below its five-year average. So it might be a little bit overvalued, but its PE ratio is below its historical norm. So income investors may prefer to wait for a more attractive yield unless they think that the long-term outlook is extra bullish. So if you're looking for dividend income alone, Intuit might not be the best option just because it's got that you know, 0.65% dividend yield. But if we're looking for capital appreciation plus dividend growth over time, now might be a good time to think about in Intuit. Their five-year average PE has been 35 and it's down to 31 today. So if the stock's not falling apart and the growth expectations are still strong and not falling apart, now might be a good time to think about into it. Here we go, we're looking at earnings and this one has come down a ton. The stock was at 677 in December, all the way down to 403, which is just much more realistic. I mean, this thing got up to a PE of 66 and is now down to its PE of 34. And this is why I love fast graphs. I mean, if if we were looking at buying into it or even owning shares and you know that the normalized average PE ratio has been about 30 and you see that thing get up to 64, you've 
got to think like, hey, I'm a long-term investor, but this is just insane. So either I'm not going to buy, maybe I'm going to trim my position, or maybe do something else like sell calls if you own shares or something like that. But anyways, let's look at moving forward. So analysts are expecting about 20%, 18%, and 17% earnings growth for the next three years. And if we bring that out to its average PE ratio of 29 over the past 20 or so years, you're looking at an 8% annualized return for 17% total rate of return. And so going back 21 years, we can see Intuit has returned 16.8% compound annual growth rate over 21 years is just insane. Growing a $10,000 initial investment back in 2002 into $258,000 today, that is $248,000 of share price growth or capital appreciation with $10,000 in dividends, because again, they hadn't paid a dividend that whole time and the dividend is still pretty low, but got a lot of room to grow that thing in the future. Absolutely just crushing the S&P 500. All right, Lowe's, you know, I've talked about Lowe's a lot. It's one of my favorite dividend stocks. I think the model is here to stay. Can't really be disrupted by Amazon. Um, and there's certainly room for Home Depot and Lowe's, that's been proven. 2.21% dividend yield, so the highest yielder of the group. Dividend safety is at 93, 31% dividend growth in May of 2022, about $120 billion market cap company, and a 26% payout ratio with a forward payout ratio of 30, so right up there around what Nike's at. Net debt looks good. Dividend streak of 59 years without a reduction. They increased their dividend from 2007 to 2009. Sales dropped 3% from 2007 to 2009. So even if we're going into a recession, it's not the end of the world for Lowe's. Might be a bad return. As we can see, it was down 52% in 2007 to 2009. Um, but the business, in my opinion, is not going anywhere. Last five years, they've grown the dividend at 18% per year. Last 20 years, 24% dividend growth per year. Credible track record. They do pay it quarterly for a $4.20 annual payout. X dividend is July 19th, that just passed, and the payout is August 3rd. So the next one will come up in November. Their dividend is 24% above its five year average and a lower than easier forward PE. That could indicate a company is dying in a falling knife. What I think it indicates with Lowe's is just that the, there's so much economic fear right now because of interest rates and everything like that. Lowe's is gonna be fine, it's businesses and dying. A time like this is the time to invest in a company like Lowe's if you have a long-term outlook, in my opinion. So if we hop over to Fast Grass, this is the one, it's, it's the cheapest out of all of them compared to its average PE ratio historically and its analysts are looking for it to grow about earnings about 12%, 9%, and 10%. And so over the next three years, even if we just bring that to a PE of 15, you're looking at a 12% annualized return or a 33% total return. But then if it gets back up to its average, which is you know maybe unlikely, but its average PE of 19, you're looking at a 24% annualized return for 72% total rate of return between now and January of 2025. And so if it lands anywhere in between that PE of 15 and that PE of 19, investors still stand to do really well. Even after this sell-off, Lowe's has still beaten the S&P 500. So a $10,000 investment starting in 2003 has turned into $90,000 compared to $41,000 for the S&P 500. You've received $8,000 in dividends. So almost completely you know, paying for the investment itself, your $10,000 investment, you almost got that back in dividends. And then the share price growth has been 82,000 for a total value of $90,000. If you like this content, again, just like the video, subscribe to the channel. It does a ton to help me out.